Hello, welcome back to my blog, Edis English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today, I am going to read William Wordsworth's beautiful sonnet, Composed upon Westminster Bridge. It is written on September 3rd, 1802. As you all know, William Wordsworth is a romantic poet, and being a romantic, he sees nature as a spiritual entity. His entire being or the very gamut of nature and its affluence gives him a simple message that it is the very God, it is the very spirit or it is the very essence of life and its aftermath. When we find in Warswardian poetry, it is the nature that is a mystic and the nature that is at once philosophical, at once a guide, at once a spiritual entity to him. His lyrical ballads, which was uh, co-published with his friend Coldridge, is the arresting principles of return to nature, but it is also full of humanism, full of seeing the serenity and the beauty and the placid calmness of the nature and its surrounding, and it teaches a profound message to humanity that nature has the spirit of soothing your heart or healing spirit to make your mundane life into a meaningful one, a life that can be remedied into new phase of or new lease of life and that is the very entity of living and that is the very spirit of living and that message has been delivered in all of his poems in Warswathian purity. So let's begin our poem, Watswarthian Sonnet, composed upon Westminster Bridge. As you know, the Westminster Bridge is in London. The beauty of the London in its early morning is the very description of this sonnet. The very feature of this particular sonnet is the purity of tone or the essence of beauty that he captures. And the daily din and bustle, the very burden of life or the world that is too much with us is not yet started at this early morning. So poet has a glimpse of this early peaceful morning of the London city and that description of serenity, that description of beauty arrests his mind and as well as it arrests our mind too as it describes or as it leads us into the, the very other side of city life. Even being a city dweller, even being a person who is too much with this world, with the hustle and bustle of daily life, one can have a peace in this peaceful, serene atmosphere. So, the tranquility that comes within, the heart that makes everything beautiful, it is the searching soul that makes this nature beautiful. You have to search a bit, you have to find that location. Even the busy London city is a peaceful location here is an appealing one, a piece of natural beauty, and that is a spiritual awakening, a spiritual message by Wordsworth, the lines. So let's concentrate in this poem and see how Wordsworth finds a peaceful solace in this London beauty in early morning. The poet Wordsworth is touched by the untainted beauty of this London in this early morning. The humanity, the din and bustle, the daily workshop has not yet started its businesses and the people are still in its early mood. Even none of them has aroused. A few like Wordsworth has aroused and seen this natural piece of beauty. That beauty haunts him and that beauty arrests his mind in its full features. The very sonnet has been divided into two parts, octet and sestet. In the octet part, it states the very calm atmosphere of the city and in the sestet part, it says the description further with a little message of spirituality that nature and its beauty is 
the very akin to spiritual awakening or, or a solace to heart that is uh, like that of visiting a temple or going to the church. So a spiritual journey or a natural affluence is like that of a spiritual journey to us and that has, message has been delivered in the sister part. The sonnet begins with a hyperbolic line. It states, Earth has not anything to show more fear. Dull would he be of soul who could pass by a sight so touching in its majesty. So simply it says that a peaceful heart or a person who has the eye to see the beauty of nature can only see the natural phenomena. Otherwise, he would, would be unable to see or unable to comprehend the very meaning of this peaceful serene atmosphere of the early morning. So the very first line it says, Earth has not anything to show more fear. It is quite a hyperbolic statement. It is too much to say that this morning beauty of this London city is the, far, is the fairest one among the fair objects of this earth. So earth has not anything to show more fear the very first line adds to our meaning of saying the statement of the poet is that he is quite excited to see that serene beauty of this early morning. And that beauty is very much a contrast of the din and bustle of the daily life as we are hardly can enjoy that sort of early morning beauty as we were busy late at night and we cannot have that early morning riser and I cannot see that serene beauty in front of the poet as poet is observing in front of him. Dull would he be of soul who could pass by a sight so touching in its majesty. Here the line is hyperbeton. Hyperbeton is a kind of a statement or the lines where the words are jumbled or rather the regular order of the words are inversed for a dramatic uh, statement, for a striking dramatic statement. So here a person who could pass by this scene is a dull one, is unromantic one, is not alive in spirit that message has been told. So one person who is full of intelligence, full of spiritual awakening must enjoy this serene beauty of this nature. Otherwise he is a dull person, unwanted person or rather an unwelcoming person or rather a person who is most probably spiritually blind or rather unromantic. This city now doth like a garment wear the beauty of the morning. Silent, bare, sheeps, towers, domes, theatres, temple lie, open unto the field and to the sky, all bright and glittering in the smokeless air. Now how and what is the atmosphere? In front of the poet, poet sees the very beauty and the serenity and the very calmness of the nature. What he sees? like that of a woman who is wearing a garment and the beauty of the morning has been compared to be that woman who is beautifully attired and the silence, bareness or the emptiness of the deal and bustle of the life is the very rhetorical elements that the woman is beautified with or the fairness of that lady is the very epical features of its silence, of its, of its calmness and placidity. The ships, the towers, the domes, the theatres, the temples, everything which remain full of excitement, full of gathering, full of crowd, full of din and bustle of daily life is now entirely calm, entirely placid, entirely a serene atmosphere is there. And that is quite welcoming one. 
spiritually awakening one and that appeals the poet's heart open onto the field even the fields are open hardly the morning workers are there in this early morning and openness is not only on the fields but also on the sky the sky is smokeless and the factories has not yet started its smoky journey so it's the flexibility its beauty and its appeal that makes this early morning london picture so picturesque so kaleidoscopic so appealing to the poet as well as to us all bright and glittering in the smokeless air the smokeless air means non it's not yet started polluting the very daytime pollution or its smokes has not yet aroused and the factory is not yet started its smoky journey and we can enjoy we can see the very bright and glittering the gleaming atmosphere of the air as well as what so the first octave, octave lines gives us a vivid description of the beauty that has its strikingly three key features one is silence one is emptiness one is smokeless airy fragrant atmosphere and vibrant too in the next sister line it shifts a bit and the spiritual understanding of the poet has been delivered and it has been understood and it has to be understood that the poet has to deliver a message not only to de describe the very beauty of that london beauty but it impliedly delivers a message that the message is very clear that you the person who have the glimpse of this early london morning can have a spiritual awakening a affluence of nature and that is quite soothing and that is quite appealing to us and it's quite get rid of the too much world that we are actually living at this present conditions what's what quite gradually appealing us or attracting us towards that spiritual journey that the poet personally having that journey within and that message is very clear it says never did sun more beautifully strip in his past splendor valley rock or hills so it simply states the very beauty of the early dawn or the gleaming of the sunlight hyperbolically it stated that the hill rock or the valley in whichever this golden color of this early sun is falling is making more beautiful and it is so beautifully attired such a beautiful kaleidoscopic picture might might not have seen before never so i never felt a calm so deep so the word calm or mental it is it it applies both the calmness of the atmosphere as well as it makes a solace in our heart and that leads us to be calm too so the calmness both inner and outer is the very aspects of this natural affluence so never so i never felt a calm so deep the poet has felt a deep calmness a spiritual calmness as well as atmospheric calmness in front of him and he he hyperbolically states that such a calmness he has never seen the river glide in his own sweet will dear god the very houses seem asleep and all that mighty heart is lying still the poet says the river theme is flowing in its own way in its gleaming in its glittering way and the wheel is not disturbed by any of the ships passing ships or vehicles 
so the wheel of the nature has its own way and it is more appeal and here he appeal to god as the nature god spiritual awakening everything comes into the same line to wordsworth and wordsworth says oh my almighty god the very houses seem as you the houses which looks in front of him which are standing tall in front of him are full of lights full of glowing faces full of hands out from the windows but they are calm cool and complacent so people are still asleep the houses are even in animate here the house animates when it becomes in daytime full of hustle full of bustle full of businesses and all the mighty heart is lying still the londoners are called mighty hearts the whole of the civilization are called mighty hearts what's what is for the beauty of the nature but he does not make any point against this hustle and bustle of this daily life rather he advises each and every man to find a solace within this daily businesses so he says the mighty londoners that means after their daily businesses they are still in sleep but their sleep if physically then okay but if they are sleeping spiritually then what sort this opposing he says let's <clears throat> he says let's make a spiritual awakening to this new understanding of london bonding the beauty a solace a journey towards the supremacy of soul supremacy of bliss supremacy of happiness supremacy of calmness with this hope that you have understood this particular poem if you have any questions regarding this poem you can just pop up here and ask me any type of questions i will try my best to answer and like share comment and obviously subscribe so that you can get this type of blogs this type of analysis further bye bye